Okay, in this video I'm going to show you some top tips for making your viewport view of your model look much more realistic and I'm going to show you how you can export that and use it for promotional graphics. So first top tip, change the background. So most of you will have a background that's maybe like a gradient. Um, if we change it so that it's all one color then you will be much more easy to uh, to cut that out in a desktop publishing software. So go tools, application options, select colors. Here you want to make sure it says presentation and then choose one color. If you apply that you'll see you've now got a white background. Next tip is the type of view that you're using. So if we go to the view tab uh, default is for it to be orthographic which is what you want for maybe creating a model. It allows you to see the views um, straight on so you can draw sketches and, and do constraints and things but it's not very realistic so you want to change that orthographic view to perspective that adds in a vanishing point which just gives a little bit more realism next thing we need to do is to add some shadows so hit the shadows button it's going to add a ground shadow if you expand that you actually can see we've got ground shadows we've got object shadows so there's some shadows on the object and ambient shadows just thrown in by the environment that we're looking at if you wanted very uh, simply to, to move that shadow to a, to a different spot you can do that here this is the lighting style that has been put on as various sort of preset options two lights is, is best for the kind of thing we're looking at and there's two lights somewhere in the sky that are gonna are gonna be lighting up our shape if we go at the bottom and you select settings you can see that we've got lights that we can use here um, and we've got shadows. Go to the shadows box the lighting direction that it sets uh, for the shadow that is being cast is 45 degrees right. If I was to change that to the left you can see I've now got the um, shadow coming in this direction. It doesn't always look quite right if it's just going from that angle um, so if you wanted to change that there's a few more options in here you can have it from above um, or you can have it set by light one so you can see there that light one is sending the, the shadow just kind of a bit behind. The good thing about that is if we go back to lighting we can actually change the position of light one so that's its height so how long the shadow is going to be and this one here is its position so where the shadow is going to fall. So depending on the object that you have um, you will want you might want to, to mess around with the shadow a little bit to, to get a shadow that looks more realistic. Okay, you can also add reflections. In this example, that's going to put a little reflective floor underneath our model, um, which may or may be what you want. And there's going to be reflections within the part. If you've got shiny objects, uh, shiny materials, then um, you're going to have some reflections on that as well. Now, that's about all we can do. Um, we can change this to a re realistic view. We've got a little bit of texture coming in here. And um, we can add something here called ray tracing as well, which is going to. Um, just perform more calculations on what the object might look like. Um, however, it's never going to look that great until we put some materials on. So that's the kind of very simple way of doing it. If you just had uh, simple colors where you already put materials on, that's how you can make it look a little bit more realistic. But uh, and what we're going to look at next is how we can add materials. Okay, so we've made a few changes to our view. We've made it perspective, we've got reflections and shadows, we've messed around with this the light so the shadow falls where we want it, and we've made the background white which makes it easier to, to drop this model into a, a page in a, in a bit of desktop publishing software. What we need to do really though is to play around with some materials to make it look more realistic. So, how are we going to do that? Um, up here we've got options for materials. Uh, when we talk about materials in Inventor, um, there's two elements. Where one is the is the actual material property. We're not really bothered about that. That's um, deals with the physical characteristics of the part. So if we made this part here steel um, in the material section, that would give us give this the properties of material. So for example, the mass uh, the, uh, of, 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 of steel um, and other physical characteristics. We're not worried about that. We just want the appearance to change. So we're just going to look at this button here golden rule of changing materials is to do it within the part so if you're in an assembly make sure that you've, you double click the part so you're in the part space here now I'm in gold 
part 1B or you can right click and open the part separately. You can see this has already got a material appearance applied to it, the ice whites, um, and if I click that button there these are all the options that we've got. Make sure you've got the Autodesk appearance library selected. This gives you a lot more options um, because uh, it because it calls in all the different sort of um, swatches of material from across all the Autodesk products. Now quite often you'll be asked to do um, a um, wood effect, so let's have a look at that because it, it gives us some some issues as well as some options. I'm going to go for white oak for that part, um, and I'm just going to finish that one, and I'm going to put a white oak on this one here as well. So if I'm just putting W because I know it starts with a W and it will jump to that part of the list. Now wood effect, as you can see, what we've got is we've basically had a um, a little picture of, of wood that's been stuck onto um, the surfaces. So it's not totally realistic. In real life we'd have end grain, we don't have end grain. Um, if we look at this piece of wood here, we can see the grain of the oak. Now that is scale is too small. That makes the block look huge. So what we need to do is we need to adjust now the material. So I'm going to show you how to change the scale to make it look a bit more realistic. I'm going to show you how we can rotate the, 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 the grain, if you like, so that it's running a different direction. And also how to add a color so that we can see those two blocks are um, different. So we'll have one that's, that's maybe green, one that's blue. So if you want to edit the material, we're going to go back into our, our the part that we've got the material um, applied to and um, we're going to hit this rainbow button here. This is going to allow us to um, mess about with the the appearance sort of qualities. So these are various um, materials of, that are within the document somehow. This is the one that we just um, applied, the white oak. And if you hover over it you can see you get a little pencil mark which allows you to edit it. If you want to you can uh, duplicate it and create a new version of it. I'm just going to edit the one we've got just now. So this is what's making up our, our appearance. We've got a, a, a kind of base colour. We've got an image, which is a picture of a piece of wood. We've got some um, some sh sheen, if you like. And then the other thing down here we're, we're going to look at is, is something called tint. So first thing, let's have a look at the image. A little arrow to the right-hand side and edit the image. And you can see this is our swatch. So what it's going to do is it's going to take this, this swatch here and it's going to repeat it on a sort of tile basis across uh, whatever the, the object is. So if you had a really large piece you'd see it's repeating, you'd see these bits of the pattern repeating. Now the size of this tile here is 2.454 centimeters which is too small. So let's make it 10 by 10 and if I close that and I apply that and come out here you'll see that the grain size now changes and that is a bit more like um, a, a piece of wood. This is only 60 mil long, so that looks a little bit more like the piece of wood that we're looking at. It's possibly slightly too um, small, but we'll run with that. So next thing we want to do then is we want to change the the orientation. I'd like this grain to rather be running up and down, or it to be running long ways. So back into our um, appearance browser, edit white oak, and back into the image again, and you'll see that what we can do here is we can rotate. So if you rotate that 90 degrees that's going to spin the grain around um, which will make it look a bit better again press apply sometimes it updates at this point and other times you have to kind of close it out before it does it there we go so now the grain's running along as I said a minute ago there's no end grain that really would be end grain I'm not going to worry about that now we'll, um, we'll just live with that so the last thing I want to do is to change the color so again back into my appearance browser edit white oak and I'm going to go to tint. If I just click that little button there and select tint, um, this is a black color. So there's a preview here. Um, so it's going to get, that's going to be too dark. But what you're going to get is you're going to get black, but you'll still be able to see the kind of grain beneath. Um, we want something a little bit more jolly. So let's maybe pick a green color. Um, let's apply that and close these. And you'll see now we've got like a green stain on the wood. So if we're happy with that we can return. Now you can see this one really looks completely off. So we need to do the same on, on that one. So we're going to edit the size, the scale rather. Uh, we made that, I'll make that 12 this time. Just make it a little bit different. 
Um, I'm going to leave that grain that way round, but I am going to give it maybe a blue tint. Okay, so now I've got my, my green and my blue. So the reason I've left them that way is just so that they're different. You can you can choose to rotate any of the material um, swatches if you need to. So that's now um, added material. So the last thing we need to do is think about how we're going to create an image from this view. Okay, so if we're happy with what we the changes we've made, um, we're ready to save this. Uh, sort of view, if you like, as an image. You can use the the the, the F4 button to pan around and get the the exact view that you're happy with, um, and you can zoom in and out to to wherever you want it to be. Um, and there's two ways that we can go about um, exporting that image. The first way, simplest way, maybe, is to go use the file export image option. Now if we do that, um, we've got some options down here. And um, of, sorry, of options of file types, so you can have compressed or you can have the non-compressed. So the TIFF, PNG, or bitmap, maybe it would be the best if you wanted to um, have a high-quality image. Um, and one of the features that they offer is if you select the option button here, you can choose a transparent background. So what that's going to do is it's going to remove um, all the white from the background, so that when you drop that into your Page Plus software or whatever else you might use, and none of this will be white, it'll be transparent, you'll just have the edges of the model, a bit of shadow, and you can drop that into your um, presentation uh, and move it around without having to worry about this white background. So that's a simple way, so save that, that would be a simple way of, of dropping it in. Um, if you want to add a little bit more realism, then we can add something here called ray tracing. Ray tracing is going to um, do more calculations on the model so that it looks at textures, the way the light's shining off these these surfaces and so forth. Um, it's going to take a while to actually to render because it has to do lots of calculations, but it can give you quite a nice result. If I click that one there, so the the the, the first option that comes through comes as a as a low resolution, and that's only taken me what like ten seconds to do. If you're happy with that, you can press your save. Again, you can choose the file format. You can choose whether you want it to have a um, a, a, a transparent background or what have you. This one you'll see hasn't got a shadow. So if we go back and go on to maybe draft, it's going to take a bit longer, but we've now got our shadow appearing here. Um, and if you wanted an even higher quality uh, image, then you could select the high, and that's probably going to take about 10 minutes to, to render through satisfactorily. This thing here, the progress will go from rough to fine, um, and once it, it finishes, you can you can stop it and save it. You can save it at any point if you're happy with it. Pause and save. Um, I could do that to show you. So pause that and save that, and I can choose my my files. Um, uh, this saving it this way because it's looking at all the surfaces here. You, so you cannot actually remove the background. You'd have to cut that out. So if you wanted to have a transparent background and drop it in, you might be better off just saving it. Let's start that again. Okay, so we've got our um, block, we've added some colour to it, and now how do we export that? So there's two ways to do it. One way, if we're happy with this as a view, we can go File and Export an Image. Um, and then it gives us options here to, um, to save in different formats. And the one benefit of doing this is we get the option here, if we press Options, to add transparent background. So what that's going to do is it's going to remove all the white from the background so that when we open that in a um, bit of software, page plus or what have you, and drop it in, it's not going to have any of the background that we have uh, to, to, to get in the way. It was all removed. So that, that can be a benefit. However, it's not possibly the most realistic view. So the alternative way is to go through um, a ray tracing process, which is um, going to perform a lot more calculations on textures and the way light's hitting surfaces and so forth and give us a bit more realistic um, image. If we use this process, there's, there's three levels of, of, of complexity, low, low resolution, draft or high. The, the, the low resolution takes nine seconds or so, um, and if you're happy with that you can press save, um, select your location and your file format. This does no longer give you the option for the transparent background, so you would need to remove that by hand 
using the cutout tool or a magic wand tool or what have you. Um, if you want uh, to, imp to improve that, you can go through draft or, or embed that would be the high. And this is going to, you'll see, is going to actually think about how the wider area is affected by the shadow, the shading, and the reflections. It's going to take a while, maybe even 10 minutes, just to render this simple block. But if you can leave that running, um, then when you come to save that, you're going to get much better objects. Certainly for larger renders for environments, um, that could be a way of running it that would give you um, a, a fairly good result. So once it's finished, you press press save. Um, what I'll do is I'll pause the video, and when it's when it's done, I'll show you the result. Okay, so I've waited what this is over ten minutes now, and you can see that this has started to look much better. There's still a few bits of speckling that could be left. I've got a nice bit of smooth shadowing, some um, ambient shadow coming here, object shadows, and a bit of texture. So if I'm happy with that, I can pause that. It's just come into fine, and I could save that as per usual. So. Um, if you follow those steps, you should be able to get a fairly simple um, but quite effective visual of your model that you can then use in your um, desktop publishing um, software. If you needed to insert that into a um, drawing, so if I was to save that here, um, I'm just going to drop it into downloads the minute if I just save that as gold one save that there if you wanted to open that and save that into a uh, a drawing the way to do that obviously you need to select your own version of your drawing template but as a quick way if you go to manage and you go insert object and you select create from file you can then find using the browse button the image and drop that in and you then have that image within your um, sheets uh, within your presentations. Alternatively, obviously, you can just use that file, image file, and drop it into desktop publishing software. So there you go. There's some top tips for making your viewport model look a little bit more effective.